The Ballon d'Or is the most prestigious award in football given to the best players in the world. Only true football legends have ever received this award, but unfortunately, some of the all-time greatest to have ever played the game have fallen just a bit short of having their hands on the golden ball. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raymar, back again for another video, and today, we're gonna look at part one of the greatest players to have never won the Ballon d'Or series. Now, the only rule for this list is that it's only for players who have made it to the top three voting for the award at least once in their careers. And lastly, the three winners of my Messi giveaway will be announced at the end of the video, so with that out of the way, let's get on to it. Number 1. Oliver Kahn Regarded as arguably one of the greatest goalkeepers of all time, Oliver Kahn was the only goalkeeper in history to finish top three in Ballon d'Or voting more than once. Kahn finished third place in 2001 and a third place in 2002. It's actually pretty rare to have a goalkeeper finish top three in the Ballon d'Or voting. Before Khan, the last goalkeeper to make it to the top three was Czechoslovakia's Ivo Viktor in 1976. Additionally, there has only been one goalkeeper in history to have ever won the Ballon d'Or, and that is Lev Yashin of Dynamo Moscow back in 1963. Khan was voted the Bundesliga best goalkeeper for six years in a row from 1997 to 2002. Additionally, Khan was also voted Europe's best goalkeeper for a ridiculous four consecutive years from 1999 to 2002. In 2001, Khan would lose out to Michael Owen finishing third in the Ballon d'Or voting. That year, Khan and Bayern Munich won the Champions League and he won the Man of the Match in the final, saving three consecutive penalties in a shootout that would decide the outcome of the game. Khan also became the Bundesliga Player of the Year, the Bundesliga Goalkeeper of the Year, the European Goalkeeper of the Year, the World Goalkeeper of the Year, and won the Bundesliga title. Michael Owen, on the other hand, despite his decent 24-goal season, only won the FA Cup and Community Shield in comparison. Quite an underwhelming performance by Owen considering it wasn't even his best season. Khan, on the other hand, held a record for the longest time with no goals scored, with 773 minutes along with the various titles and unchallenged dominance at the goal. Again, in 2002, Khan would finish third place in Ballon d'Or voting, losing to Ronaldo the Phenomeno in a year where Brazil took the World Cup trophy. Admittedly, Ronaldo in 2002 was a very difficult opponent to beat. However, Khan and his German team still made it to the World Cup final, only conceding a single goal along the way. Ronaldo had a great year internationally, but Khan, one of the all-time greats, was at his peak for both club and country. This year, he still managed to win the Bundesliga title, the Bundesliga Player of the Year, the Bundesliga Goalkeeper of the Year, the Europe Goalkeeper of the Year, and the World Goalkeeper of the Year. Although Khan should have definitely won the 2001 Ballon d'Or, the unfortunate truth is that goalkeepers just don't get as much praise for their efforts. Despite their importance, importance to the sport and their teams, they just aren't as glorified as other positions. The fact that Gianluigi Buffon and Emmanuel Neuer were the only goalkeepers to have been nominated after Oliver Kahn is a sad testimony to this fact. Quite unfortunate for the most important position in the sport of football. Number 2. Thierry Henry Arguably one of the best players to have ever played in the Premier League and undoubtedly the greatest Arsenal player in history, Henri is in fact Arsenal's all-time record goalscorer with 228 goals and has led the Gunners in scoring for every single season that he's played for Arsenal. Henri was amazingly awarded the Premier League Golden Boot from 2001 to 2006 for six consecutive seasons. 
as well as winning two Premier League Player of the Seasons, three FA Cups, and two Premier League titles. In 2003, Henri would receive his first nomination for the Ballon d'Or, but only finished second and tragically lost out to Pavel Nedved of Juventus. Arsenal and Premier League fans everywhere claimed this loss as an absolute robbery. Pavel Nedved's achievements that year did not even come close to that of Thierry Henry's, because that year, Henri scored a career-high 39 goals, was voted the Premier League Player of the Season, won the Premier League Golden Boot and led Arsenal to a perfect unbeaten season and league title. Arsenal would end up finishing the season with 26 wins, 12 draws, and 0 losses. Absolutely mind-blowing as it is still a record for the longest unbeaten run in Premier League history. Any player who's able to achieve all of this in a single season should definitely deserve to win the Ballon d'Or. I mean, think about it. Henri achieved all of this in a single season and did not even win, which is absolutely mind-blowing when you look back at it. Unfortunately, however, this was not the last loss for Henri because he would finish third place in the 2006 voting, falling under Fabio Cannavaro and Gianluigi Buffon, only receiving a hundred and twenty one votes. In 2006, Henri would have the second best scoring season of his career with a combined 33 goals and was again the Premier League player of the season and won the Premier League Golden Boot. Only three players in Premier League history have ever won the Player of the Season award more than once and those players are Nemanja Vidic, Cristiano Ronaldo and Thierry Henry. Although the Gunners did not win the title that season, the only achievements Cannavaro and Buffon had that year were their respective league titles. Another factor that could have gotten them more votes than Henri was that they both won the World Cup with Italy in 2006. But honestly, I personally don't think that people will remember Cannavaro or Nedved as well as they will with Henri. The iconic statue outside Arsenal Arena is a true testament to the legacy of Thierry Henry, earning the respect of football fans worldwide. Honorable mention, Andres Iniesta. Before we get to the last player on this list, I'm gonna have to include an honorable mention here just because this was a very highly debated turnout and was pretty controversial at the time. Back in 2010, in a year where Andres Iniesta won both the La Liga title and the World Cup trophy, ended up in second place, falling behind just 5% of the voting to Lionel Messi. Now, of course, Messi has a very strong case for winning the Ballon d'Or, and this could have also easily gone to even Xavi or fourth place Wesley Snyder, but I think that if Andres Iniesta, the man who scored the most clutch goal in the biggest stage in world football, didn't manage to win in 2010, how could Luka Modric, who didn't even win the World Cup, have gotten the Ballon d'Or over the likes of Ronaldo or Messi back in 2018? But I'm sure a lot of you guys already know how I feel about that, I've made a video on it, so we're gonna move on to the last person on this list. Number 3. David Beckham In 1999, David Beckham achieved the incredible feat of winning the Premier League, FA Cup, and the Champions League title with Manchester United all in the same season. This has been dubbed the club's most successful season in history. They would also be the first Premier League team to have ever accomplished a treble, and Beckham was quite literally the center of success. As a central midfielder, Beckham provided his teammates with countless and flawless supplies of premium grade crosses, passes, and possessions while also providing the opposing team's goalkeeper with trouble every time he had the ball in shooting distance. He was notorious for his set-piece skills, having the ability to easily bend the ball to the top corner from a distance and making precise and accurate corner kicks which usually resulted in goals. UEFA quite rightly named Beckham the club footballer of the year but only finished second in the Ballon d'Or voting to Rivaldo of Barcelona. Although Beckham was only able to score 8 goals in the 1999 season, his contributions to his club's success was his playmaking ability. Beckham did in fact lead the Premier League in assists for 3 consecutive seasons, providing and maximizing his team's offensive capability. 
Although it probably isn't right to downplay Rivaldo's amazing 1999 season, Beckham was under constant attack and received a ton of hate from the media, fans, critics, and other football players and managers as well, which would and could have greatly altered the results of the 1999 Ballon d'Or voting. That same year, Beckham had been sent off a World Club Championship final against Mexico. After that, he had sort of been the national hate figure for football fans around England. Home supporters would jeer at him with every touch off the ball, with fans even having thrown bottles directly at the team after matches. It was greatly suggested in the press that his new wife Victoria Beckham had a bad influence on him. Beckham had also began to prioritize commitments outside of football, causing the media to report on the failing relationship between him and coach Alex Ferguson. Later that year, Beckham was given permission to miss training to look after his son Brooklyn, who was sick. But coach Alex Ferguson was furious when Beckham's wife was photographed at a London Fashion Week event on the same night, claiming that Beckham would have been able to train if his wife Victoria watched after their son Brooklyn that day. Beckham had a great season for his club and helped United win the Premier League by a record margin. All of this negative publicity adding up was probably a reason as to why he fell just a bit short of winning the Ballon d'Or. I'm gonna go ahead and announce the three winners of the Messi jersey giveaway from my last video. Thank you guys for the support and participating, but I can only choose three winners, so congratulations to Darius Slabicki, Jason Barsanis, and Nathaniel Tesfe. You guys are the very lucky winners for today. But don't worry if you didn't win, I'll be giving away a Thierry Henry jersey to one lucky individual in this video as well. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, and comment who you think should have won a Ballon d'Or and why with the hashtag Raymar at the end of your comment as the keyword. But anyways guys, that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you did enjoy. This was one of my earliest videos, but it has been long since deleted, so I decided to remake it. Let me know if there are other worthy players that I've missed, because there are definitely a lot of legends who have never won the award. Make sure you guys leave a like if you want part 2 and subscribe if you haven't already for the best football documentaries on YouTube. Once again, thank you guys so much for all the love and support and I'll see you in the next one.